Mount Horeb in the Sinai Range rises more than 6,500 feet above sea level. Here Moses received the Ten Commandments. Here too he was given the blueprints for the Ark of the Covenant. In chapter 25 of the second book of Moses, directions are given for the construction of the Holy Tabernacle. And they shall make an Ark of Acacia wood and you shall overlay it with pure gold within and without shall you overlay it. And you shall make upon it a molding of gold round about. Moses was to provide special shoes and clothing which would properly insulate his workmen. Moses was warned that no one should come near the structure. It represented a mortal danger. And though Moses would hear a voice from the covering plate, no figure could be seen. If we were to build a replica of the ark today, according to Moses' instructions, we would have a condenser charged with several hundred volts. Could the gold sheath have been a form of loudspeaker, a two-way radio, reproducing a voice from afar? It is part of the Von Donnegan theory a romantics explanation of biblical text based on imagination and wonder. In the fragmentary histories from the Bible to the scripts of Babylon, there are tantalizing views of Earth seen from the distance, seen from space, seen by whom? Was it the vision of ancient astronauts communicated to the primitive population of a still young planet Earth. If we were to land on a strange planet, we would probably avoid its magnetically disruptive poles. If travelers from outer space were to land here, a likely location almost on the equator would be Egypt. The pyramids, eternal mysteries in themselves, provide additional evidence to support the premise that Earth was visited by ancient astronauts. The Great Pyramid rises to a height of 477 feet, 2,300,000 stone blocks, each a crushing two and a half tons, each perfectly fitting, climb toward the sky. The stones were transported from the Makadam Mountains on the far side of the Nile. 20,000 workmen hauling 10 blocks a day would need 640 years, more than 30 generations, to build one pyramid. To some, the massive structures were not designed as tombs for the pharaohs, but are in reality vast astronomical calculators Passageways, for example, from the interior point directly at the North Star, the way back to the heavens. If we multiply the height of the pyramid by one billion, it equals almost exactly the distance from the Earth to the Sun. At the end of the 16th century, the Dutch mathematician Ludolf arrived at the figure pi by which one can determine the circumference of a circle. If we divide the perimeter of the base of the pyramid by twice the height, we get exactly the figure pi, which Ludov only found 4,000 years later. All the evidence leads von Donegan to conclude that the pyramid is linked to the arrival of visitors from outer space, and that they may have used it as a marking place, a map reference for navigation. When modern Egypt chose to construct the Aswan Dam, there stood one obstacle. The flooding would submerge the 3,000-year-old temple of Abu Simbel. Over a hundred nations answered UNESCO's plea to save the monument. Latest equipment and engineering techniques were used. Still, it took three years to accomplish. Because centuries were needed for the original builders to create the temples, it is probable they honor no single pharaoh. They stand, however, in tribute to the gods of the sun, 
the center of Egyptian religions, and to those who return from Earth to the skies. The Salisbury Plain lies along the Wales border. A large mound rises ominously from the level expanse. The legend surrounding it suggests that it was a place of burial, not unlike the pyramids of Egypt. Close by stands Stonehenge, rock formations strewn about like so many toy blocks. It is believed to have been built 2,000 years ago. According to legend, Merlin, the magician of King Arthur's court, transported the huge slabs by magical incantations from what is now Scotland. Recent studies have employed computers to measure the distances and placements of the stones. These findings prove to some extent that Stonehenge served as a giant calendar and observatory. By visually lining up specific points, an almost exact calculation can be made as to the movement of the stars and planets. Even with computers, it has taken us years to arrive at these figures. 2,000 years ago, this area of England was inhabited only by primitive tribal people. Some still believe that Stonehenge is a temple built by the ancient Druids, the priests of the pagan Celts, and was the site of witches' conclaves and human sacrifice. The Druids still exist and continue to conduct their religious services on this site. It has been suggested that the Druids may not have built this place, but simply taken it over as their shrine. If so, then there is no trace of who might have built and left it behind. Tribes that vanished, whole civilizations that disappeared. It has happened too many times to be coincidence. Guarding the headwaters of the Amazon River are the ruins of Machu Picchu, an outpost of Peruvian Inca society. Some archaeologists suggest that the Incas found they could not extend their empire into the treacherous Amazon jungle. And so, here they stopped, and here they died. There is a curious folk legend surrounding the origin of this fortress. It is said to have been built by a divine race of light-skinned, auburn-haired descendants of the god Verichochus, who arrived in a flaming chariot. Nothing remains of these supposed people, but the legend goes on to say that they abandoned their citadel and returned to the skies. They left only the ruins of their mountaintop city for us to wonder at. The construction of defensive citadels was common to many tribal communities. On the African continent in the bushlands of southern Rhodesia are the ruins of Simbabui, meaning the heart of the lion. It is constructed of brick-shaped granite rocks, all exactly alike as if produced in a factory. 20,000 tons of identical building stones. They were laid to a height of over 30 feet to form walls which have stood for thousands of years. What masons trimmed and piled these stones with such astonishing perfection? Were they the ancestors of Bushmen whose straw huts surround the ruins, or members of a visiting group of master builders? The mystery carried von Daniken back to the Valley of the Kings in Egypt near Luxor. The valley was another royal burial ground of the pharaohs, the god kings. Not pyramids of stone, but a small mountain range converted to the use of the dead. The entrances were hidden, little more than windows into the rock, with steep stairs and winding passageways leading to the tomb of the nine-year-old pharaoh god Tutankhamun. The crypt is hollowed directly out of stone, and incredibly intricate murals decorate the walls and ceilings. 
Archaeologists have carefully studied the markings and meanings, but von Donegan points out one interesting fact. They could not have been painted by firelight. The ceilings show no trace of soot, and so no torches or oil lamps were used. What then was the light source? Markings found in this and other tombs are portraits of the god Osiris. Osiris played an important role in Egyptian religious belief. After giving knowledge to the world, he left the earth and exists in the heavens. Each dead pharaoh, the kings of earth, joined the spirit of Osiris in the heavens. Their mummified remains were prepared for the journey. In the golden armor casing, whom were they imitating? Outside the cave crypt stand the remains of the ancient mortuary, the temple of Amenhotep III. Here the Egyptian priests preserve the remains of their rulers. We will never know the origins of the science of mummification. Perhaps it was an imitation of a physical conservation method used by extraterrestrial visitors. The secrets died along with the mortuary during the great earthquake in the year 27 BC. Some distance away, guarding the entrance to this temple of the dead, rest the Memnon Colossi, 2,000 years old, 52 feet high, each weighing over a thousand tons. It is difficult for us to imagine them being moved from the distant quarries by manpower alone. And so the sentinels of the temple evoke images of a time when the activity inside was directed by godlike visitors who came as masters to Earth. The Sphinx, symbol of the riddle, the eternal enigma, the head of a man, the body of a lion. This fierce stone creature faces the rising sun the flaming chariot of the Egyptian gods. It is meant to protect the sonship when it lands to carry the pharaohs back to the heavens. Secrets in stone abound throughout the world. Easter Island, Isle of a Thousand Mysteries, minute, lost in the watery expanse of the South Pacific, 3,000 miles off the coast of Chile. The inhabitants call their island Maraki Tirani, which means eyes looking up to heaven. The neighboring atoll is called the island of the bird people, creatures with human bodies in the heads of birds. Von Donnegan suggests that these bird heads could also be helmets equipped with a type of mask. The island's ancient legends tell of flying people who arrived amidst fire and thundering noise. The landscape is dominated by volcanic cratered lakes. Today, about 2,000 people live here. There were never more than 4,000 natives at any time. Of the total population, 70% were women, children, or the elderly. The majority of able-bodied men was needed for the production of food. Thus, the number of workmen was so small that it would have been impossible for them to create the more than 600 gigantic stone figures found everywhere on the island. Many of the stone gods stand 65 feet high and weigh nearly 400 tons. Most of the sculptures are but partly exposed. Only excavation reveals their true size. The figures are all the same, an unusual type of human wearing the same haughty, taciturn expression.
One statue unearthed by explorer Thor Heyerdahl suggests man's role. Unlike the others, it has a rounded head and is kneeling. The workshop at the volcanic crater, Ranoraraku, has stone so hard that repeated hammering with a stone chisel hardly scratches it. The colossi carved here were removed to distances as much as 12 miles from this location. There was no army of slaves for labor, no wood for rollers, nor the slightest traces to suggest that the sculptures were dragged across the island. And so they lie here, mute, eyes looking up to heaven. Easter Island might have been the key to many mysteries. When it was first discovered, a group of wooden tablets covered with hieroglyphics were found. But zealous missionaries burned them, sealing the secrets of the monoliths. So we must look elsewhere for explanations. The legends of Easter Island claim that the stone giants moved themselves with the help of mana, a mysterious force which only two priests could invoke. And that one day the priest disappeared, and so did the mana. What was mana? Von Daniken wondered if there were strangers from other planets possessed of extraordinary powers. Did they have the ability to defy the laws of gravity? To this day, Easter Island exerts an unusually strong magnetism. The report of a French expedition in 1964 ends as follows. Since there are inexplicable magnetic forces and unusual geological phenomena on Easter Island, one cannot exclude the possibility of extraterrestrial contacts. line from Easter Island is the Bay of Pisco along the coast of southern Peru. From the ground there is what appear to be a meaningless set of lines, but from a high altitude they form a trident 300 feet long pointing the way inland. focus. We see a spider, an eagle, a peacock, and a hummingbird, none of which can be recognized from the ground. And there is no observation point, no mountain nearby, overlooking the plain. The giant drawings must have been directed by someone hovering high above. Straight as arrows, one huge geometric puzzle. Some lines parallel, some intersecting. Starting nowhere and ending nowhere.
The conclusion reached by von Däniken is that the lines represent a landing field. The plain of Nazca is a gigantic abandoned airport. Landing strips, roads, and flattened beds that resemble rocket launch ramps were cut into the plateau. In a radius of 1,000 miles, enduring archaeological mysteries abound. And the question arises, was this the center, the base camp of an ancient astronaut colony? Around the world, we have seen carvings in Japan, Egypt, Australia, Yugoslavia. And all bear a striking resemblance to the carvings at Nazca. Was Earth visited by creatures, astronauts from another planet? We have only fragments, starlit night, and allow yourself the freedom to wonder. All around the globe, giant radio telescopes are scanning the stars for signals. Some are even sending signals, not to anyone in particular, but to anyone who may be able to hear them. By some incredible coincidence, perhaps we will establish a dialogue with an extraterrestrial community, even if that conversation is only a matter of meaningless blips and dots. NASA recently launched an aluminum greeting card into space, addressed in effect to whom it may concern. Etched on the plaque are the nude figures of a man and a woman, two-digit computer code numbers, and a diagram showing Earth's location within the nine planets of our solar system. A message to whatever intelligent life there may be in the universe. Hello from Earth to some wandering ancient astronaut. NASA is especially interested in the possibility of life on the planet Mars. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California has had a direct line to Mars via the Mariner 9 spacecraft, which has been taking extensive photographs as it orbits the red planet. Mars is a world significantly like the Earth in terms of atmosphere, temperature, and gravity. It is also the closest and easiest to explore in depth. To date, no recognizable life has been detected. But the same was true of previous Mars missions. The last time photographs were taken, scientists agreed that there was definitely no life on Mars. However, the smallest area the spacecraft's camera could focus on was three miles wide. Therefore, the only things we might have missed are a couple of mile-long elephants. Dr. Carl Sagan is one of the directors of the Mariner mission exploring Mars and he has a special interest in the possibilities of intelligent life in the universe. The question arises, might there have been a visit to the Earth in historical times? There are popular books on this subject. Um, it's an idea which people find exciting. It's a kind of mm, scientific justification of theological belief which people would rather believe uh, uh, in any case. Uh, it's kind of modern dress for old-time religion. Well, what about that? Is, it, is that possible or not? I can only say that you can't exclude the possibility, but there's not a smidgen of evidence that is compelling.